My name is George Steele. I uh, am 62 years old. Been living here in Latvia for uh, 27 years now. Have a uh, I have a wife who's Latvian. That's the reason why I came here. Uh, we have two children. I was born in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Well, we actually met in Cleveland. We uh, we worked together. She was uh, she was in a program that allowed her to work and study. So the place where she actually worked was where I worked. We met. We uh, fell in like. And uh, when her program finished a year later, she asked me to come here to Latvia. She uh, thought that it would be better for us to uh, be here. There would be more opportunities. Five months after she returned to Latvia, I followed her and I've been here ever since. At the time, um, foreign Latvians were sending what was called humanitarian aid to local Latvians. It was just right, it was right after the uh, end of the Soviet Union. And so foreign Latvians were uh, renting uh, these uh, large containers and they had uh, boxes that they would buy and they would pack things inside those boxes and send them to their relatives. My wife found out about this, or at the time my girlfriend found out about this, and I bought several of these boxes. I, I can't remember the exact number, five or six or something. Uh, packed most of my essential things uh, that I thought were, I would need in Latvia. Those things I couldn't carry on the airplane. Uh, pots, pans, things like that. It was the first time I was outside the continental United States in my life. I had never flown transcontinental. I never even had a passport. That's, that's very typical for Americans. We don't, uh, we don't travel that much, so we don't have a passport. There were other transitions for me. I have children back in the United States, so that was the hardest transition for me to, uh, to leave them behind with their mother, of course. But uh, the actual physical move was not as uh, difficult as people might think it would have been. What I do mainly is I teach uh, conversational English. Uh, that's my main job, but I'm also a part-time actor and uh, I'm in Dog Appeals Theater, but uh, I also do voiceovers and I do commercial uh, work as in commercial, as in reclama. Yeah, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a part-time professional actor also. And I also do proofreading in English and things like that. So uh, mostly involving language, but also involving, uh, also involving the arts. I can sum it up in two words, uh, cold and gray. Not only about the uh, weather, but about the people and about the, uh, about, about the uh, overall atmosphere. And it was cold and it was gray and bleak. At that time, uh, people dressed only in black or gray. Uh, there, were, there were no really bright and, and sharp colors like I'm wearing today. Even the people walked around like from a Dostoevsky uh, novel, they were just kind of like, unhappy and smiling. The Latvian society is not welcoming to foreigners in general, uh, but it's even less welcoming to people who are visibly different. And of course, I mean of, of, of different uh, geographical uh, areas, such as uh, the Middle East or, or, uh, or Africa, or in some cases even like uh, Asia or, or South America or Central America, people who are f just visibly different than the European model. And therefore, no, I didn't feel welcomed coming into the society in society. My uh, wife did her best to uh, to try to help me feel welcome. She introduced me to her university classmates, former uh, classmates, uh, who were very open-minded and so on and so forth. And um, that was helpful to an extent. And from time to time, I bumped into uh, expats, Americans, uh, I think a German or two, who were open to trying to become more 
involved in life outside of Latvia. In other words, trying to be more multicultural, even in a less, uh, a least multicultural uh, community as Latvia is. I'll tell you about the first time I, I encountered racialism. If you understand the difference between racism and racialism, if you don't understand the difference between racism and racialism, I suggest that people look up the two words because there is a difference. Racialism is the system. It is systematic. Racism is the encounters, are the encounters we have every day. My very first encounter with racialism in Latvia was a few months after I got here. My, uh, my wife and some of her work colleagues and some of their friends who were all foreign Latvians and I went to uh, a, a now defunct club called Saxophones. We went in, and as usual, I walked in last because that's the way I grew up in the hood. You walk in last, you don't get chunked. And there was a guy kind of like leaning on the, oh, on the side, and he said to me, show me your documents. I, I was completely shocked, and I said, to uh, my documents, why do I need to show you my documents? And he reached into his coat pocket and he pulled out this little folding thing. It was paper or, or cardboard or something. This says, I can, I can see your documents. And I said, well, look, I, I don't need to show you my documents. And he pulled back his coat and there was his service gun. And he said, you see this? This says, I can see your documents. Right at that moment, when he closed his jacket up, uh, my wife and her f colleagues and friends came back, and he, s he turned to me and he said, is this your wife? And I said, yeah, it is my wife. And he said, oh, oh I have to go. And he walked out. That was my very first encounter, just a few months after I got here. Uh, with racialism, with, with systemic uh, racism. People here refuse to accept or even acknowledge a person's uh, lived experience, if you know what that means. Lived experience is simply those things that a person goes through day to day and affects them. And to express those things, to talk, talk about those things, if people say, I don't believe that happened. You know, one of my sons told me, you know, send me pictures. If there are no pictures, it didn't happen. Well, that's the mentality that people have here. And it, it's, it's a form of willful ignorance, a term that I use also a lot. So you have people who refuse to look at a person's lived experience and refuse to become enlightened want to stay ignorant by their own choice, willful ignorance. It's just, it's just too much. Um, I'm 62 years old. I've, I've been on this planet all that time. I was born at night, but I wasn't born last night. I can say honestly that in the, t the past 27 years, even though I may have felt better living here, I've never felt that this is my home. Even though I have citizenship, I have two children here, I have job, I have acquaintances and friends. I, I, this, this, I've never felt welcomed here. I've never felt like this is a place that wants me to stay here. And then as things went on with jobs and, and being more in, involved in talking about inclusion and things like that, uh, help me feel better, help me feel more release of what I felt inside of myself as far as the tension, as far as the, in some cases the loneliness, but it uh, never translated into feeling like this is my home. The process of learning Latvian, as, as, as I already started to tell you, was pretty much on my own shoulders. If there was a government-funded program, I didn't know about it. I received the education of, La of the Latvian language because I wanted to. I really wanted to. I thought it was important to, um, 
to respect the country that I lived in, respect the culture that I lived in, but also to be able to communicate. I have those those days when uh, walking down the street is tougher than others. The positive thing about the pandemic is that people are more inside of themselves. They don't they don't throw out their their racism in my face or in other people's people's faces as much as nearly as much as they did before the pandemic. My daughter and my son have gone through racism. I don't even have words in any language to to tell you how I feel about that because these are two young people who were born here, raised here. Their their first language is Latvian. Their basic mentality is Latvian. And there are people who through their actions, through their words, tell them, no, you're not Latvian, either directly or indirectly. The first phase was when I first got here in 1994, it was quiet. The second phase was from 1999 to 2005, which I called the, the years of horror because that was when neo-Nazis actually walked the streets, skinheads walked the streets and they were attacking people uh, of color here in Latvia. When I tell people that they, again, lived experience, they don't believe it. And then there's been the period after 2005 till now, more or less, that has been quieter, more or less, and quieter. Emphasis on both of those words, or both of those ideas. The racial bigotry is now showing itself in a less vocal way, but still to a certain point, a, an obvious way and that is through microaggressions. Microaggressions such as staring, such as the, the little pointing and laughing and things like that. Twice uh, before the pandemic, I was taking uh, public transportation. I walked on, there were some young people there. They took a look at me and they started to do a rap song involving the N-word. It was just automatic, it's like, oh, we have to do this because he's here. It's like, why? And I, I have told people, you know, what's your problem? And I, I do it quite often now. You know, why are you staring? What is the problem? So really, no, there, there hasn't been a change in attitude, just a change in behavior. Why my mother tongue, why not Latvian? So many times I've given my life story in Latvian and people tend to gravitate more towards my accent and my sometimes incorrect usage of, of, of grammar. And I wanted to make sure that my words were clear, my words were understandable, and my words were, are my words so that there is no, no ambiguity about what I'm trying to say and there's no focus on how I'm saying it. Usually, you know, the, uh, the professionals say, we'll always leave with a, with a well wish or something like that. I've done that in the past. I have, I, uh, even for your group, I, I left you. And I, I don't feel like it anymore. Again, I'm tired. For me, it's like, well, you behave in this way, but I'm telling you it's okay. I forgive you. I don't. I don't forgive the, the racism that I've experienced over the 26 years, past 26 years. I don't ex forgive you, uh, you for the racism that uh, you've thrown on my children who are only Latvians who happen to be of uh, mixed parentage. I mean, no ill will towards anyone, but I can't forgive you. That's it.